What is up guys and welcome to the start of season 4 of my F1 2020 career mode journey, my team, Marduk Motorsport. We've been creating a little bit of a legacy as of late. If you've been living under a rock, click away now, check out the end of last season to see what happened. I'm going to spoil it now. We had the most dominant season I have ever had ever in career mode. I've done 40 seasons of career mode. This is my 41st and season 3 was my most dominant. 11 wins. Sebastian Vettel got a few wins himself uh, but was never able to challenge for the title. He was too inconsistent in our car and uh, just made poor decisions right throughout the season which ultimately cost him a chance of winning the title. So we will be parting ways uh, as of right now and we are going to find a new driver for season Four. Could it be Hamilton? Could it be Verstappen? Could it be Bottas? Ricardo? Sainz? Albon? Norris? George Russell? Redemption arc? Who knows? Um, we have the funds to sign anyone in the world. And we have the best car in the world. So everyone will want to join us. So we really are spoiled for choice when it comes to choosing our new driver. Um, so I thought as a first off... We're just going to test the waters. We're going to see if we can sign Lewis Hamilton to the team. Uh, as you can see, stats-wise, he's a bit better than Sebastian Vettel. Uh, as you would expect, being a six-time, maybe seven-time world champion, depending on when you're watching this now. Uh, but yeah, the, the approach has been accepted by Mercedes, and now it's just going to be a bidding war. Mercedes is the only thing that stands in our way between us and possibly the greatest of all time, Lewis Hamilton. So bidding war has started. We have 45-ish mil in the bank and we're going to see just how much Lewis Hamilton is is worth to Mercedes really. So um, let the battle commence. 16.3 mil is the offer uh, by us. Mercedes counter that with 16.5 mil. We go 16.8. Is Mercedes going to match that? They're thinking about it. And we won $16.8 million plus the $7.5 million buyout for Lewis Hamilton means we have signed him for season four of F1 2020 career mode my team. That was easy. 24 mil overall. So there we go. Uh, in real life, I think he's worth about 40-ish mil. Uh, but bear in mind, this is only for half a season. So um, that may well be a 50 million-ish kind of contract. And uh, it, let's hope that it's money well spent. Um, for the time being, we've nearly... I say we've nearly gone bankrupt trying to sign it, but that's, that's definitely not the case. But uh, yeah, there we go. Lewis Hamilton is signed. We still have our end of season bonus to come in, which it is right there. $70 million coming in. $92 overall million dollars in the bank. Take that, Arav. I'm not bankrupt. I can buy your team about five times over. How do you feel about that? Anyway, season is complete. Uh, we won 11 races. Pretty crazy. And when you consider the last two races of the season, we started from the back. We we probably could have got 13 wins overall. But uh, moving on to bigger and better things. Signing for Mercedes as uh, an engine deal. Makes sense. We've got Lewis Hamilton on board. Monster is the title sponsor of the team. Overall, it just all makes sense with the branding of Lewis Hamilton. Most marketable driver up there in the field. Um, he's got his team X44 for the Extreme E. And that will be coming on board as a sponsor. And just the, the color scheme, purple and black, it just makes sense. So um, hopefully it's a good fit. Let's move on to next season. Let's do it. All right. Welcome back. It's going to be one heck of a season, I think. To be honest, I don't think we've done the best job maintaining our performance through this regulation change. So we're going to be playing a bit of catch-up this year. We're counting on you, but you've got the whole team behind you. Ah, uh, it's fine. He says that cutscene every year. So, with the regulation changes, how bad could it be? Oh my god! We've gone back to Season 1 levels of performance. We are the second worst team in the field. Worst chassis. Second worst aero. At least the engine will be decent. But that is horrific. I think there might be an imposter in the team. It's just a case of figuring out who it was. Was it Vettel? 
getting kicked out. He he had his notice. He knew he was getting kicked out of the team. Maybe he led us in the wrong direction. Could it be Jeff? Could it be into the barrier? Could it be me? Who the hell knows? But uh, there was not much. There was not much at all that was saved in the way of upgrades. We'll touch on that later. But here is the driver market. Sebastian Vettel, four-time world champion, is a free agent this season, which is crazy. Absolutely crazy to me. Um, not much change up and down the field, to be honest. Um, I chose Lewis Hamilton it, partly because it all made sense marketing-wise, but I thought it would uh, send the, the silly season into overdrive and everyone would cha chop and change up and down the field. Um, doesn't look like that's happened as of yet. Uh, new signings of, uh, let's see, no one coming in yet. Antoine Hubert and Jack Aitken. Jack Aitken is now in the best seat in Formula One. Mercedes partnering alongside Valtteri Bottas. So what I thought was going to happen was... Uh, Aitken, or not Aitken, like someone like Ricardo maybe would have gone to Mercedes. I knew this uh, regulation change thing was happening, you know, it kind of had to happen. So I thought I'd leave Ricardo out and leave him in a good team for this season so that he could go for the title, yeah? So all the Ricardo stands, including myself, this is all part of the master plan, but it's not quite worked out. We've got a rookie making his debut in Formula One in a Mercedes. Antoine Hubert returns to the sport again. Uh, he was at Ferrari for half a season. Now he's back at Racing Point. Vettel could go anywhere at the halfway point of this season. Anyway, um, that's enough silly season talk for now. Let's have a look at the new car. So there she is, the MM04, the piece of crap that is going to be running at the back this season. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, uh, here's a look at the car. It's an evolution of last year's livery. Just a couple of changes here and there. We've got Mercedes AMG uh, sponsorship on the end of the front wing. We've got Lewis Hamilton's X44 Extreme E team uh, on the nose there on the side, as you can see. And the Monster Energy logos are a little bit more prominent, especially from the front. Uh, you can see there, it's just been made a bit bigger, and the text on the uh, driver number is also a little bit more clean as well. Also, the base paint is uh, actually a different pattern. I don't know if you noticed that, uh, but basically we have um, big X's on the engine covers, um, which kind of ties into the X44 you know, logo as well, which I think uh, is a nice touch. So, pat on the back to Sevi. Graphics, who uh, does all my mods and stuff, um, all my thumbnails, everything. He's an absolute genius. Mwah. Thank you, Sevi, for uh, hooking me up once again. But anyway, we have the upgrades. Uh, I did um, two upgrades heading into this race. One of them failed. That was the front downforce. Um, there's also a chassis upgrade we're going to do heading into Bahrain. We're going to rush that in, hopefully. Uh, but in terms of the upgrades, we saved in between seasons three and four. We managed to save a drag reduction upgrade, aero-wise, and then just two major downforce upgrades. That's it. Maybe uh, one element or two elements of the chassis, but minor upgrades, really, that was saved. So overall... We've lost out a lot. Still green. Try and take it easy for the first couple of laps. How good does that sound? This car is literally a frame uh, strapped to a rocket. <laughs> That's probably the best analogy I can give. The chassis and the aero is crap but we've got an amazing engine we've got an even better engine than what we had last season and it was already like one of the best i think the best in the field which is uh ridiculous shout out to mercedes for uh jumping on board and recognizing greatness we will hopefully deliver greatness ourselves at a later date but for the time being it's gonna be a long old slog this car is uh 
It's actually, it doesn't feel horrible. You know what? I thought this car was going to feel disgusting to drive. I've driven some absolute stinkers over the years. HRT, Mana, Virgin, Caterham, Force India at times. It, you, this car feels decent. It feels kind of like an online car, which for basis is like the normal Mercedes in Season 1. The only thing I can say is that the... The car is a little bit unstable at times, but I'm running an aggressive uh, qualifying style setup, uh, really aggressive anti-roll bars and uh, suspension settings and stuff. So uh, that's to be expected a little bit. We are going aggressive. You have to when you're in a desperate situation like we are to extract that extra pace. We have to risk it for the chocolate biscuit if we want to get anything at this early stage when the car is so poor. But it's time for qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix. Let's just see how bad this car is. So here we are then for the first representative se session of the season. Nearly did season of the session. Anyway, I've fumbled the bag enough. Uh, so far this video. Let's uh, not do that anymore. We're gonna see exactly what the car can do or what it can't do Hopefully, it'll be a quick road to recovery uh, We still are a big team with big resources a lot of cash in the bank so Hopefully we can recover enough this season. I don't really know. I don't want to put a I don't want to say exactly where I think we'll be at the end of the season or something, but I, I hope that we're I don't know, at least solidly in the midfield or something. We'll have to wait and see. The other teams are going to continue to upgrade. But here we go for our first run of the session. As you can see, it actually is a bit of understeer, exit oversteer as well. So the balance isn't quite there. But the car feels decent enough. I say that. We've just binned it. Which is not great. So we'll just return. Right now, front wing. That looked bad. Are you all right? Let me know you're all right. Uh... We won't return to the pit lane because we're out of the session. Wow. Just like that, we're gone. Thank you, Alpha Tauri, for completely bulldozing me out of the way and out of this session. That was Danny Kvyat, the torpedo himself. Yellow flag, mate. Slow down. Yellow flag does not mean barge your competitors out of the way. That is unbelievable. Look at that. There's so much space off to the left. He could have gone around me. Instead, he went through me. Thank you, Danny. Really appreciate that. I'll make sure you never get signed for this team. Like you ever were, to be honest. But uh, there we go. We are out in Q1. Without even setting a time. I have no idea how slow or fast this car is. But Hamilton got P19. I'm a 100 rated Lewis Hamilton. You would assume he'd be able to get the most out of this car. So that looks like that's a that's a pretty good foundation of how bad we are. About two seconds off. Um, it didn't look like for Lewis, uh, Q1 was possible. He was like three or four tenths off um, safety into the next session. So that's um, probably a bit too much to ask of a 100 rated six time or seven time world champion, depending on when you're watching this. But there we go. Last place on the grid for the Australian Grand Prix. This is also a really tough track for the AR for the player as well. So it'll be very, very difficult for me to, to make a mark in this episode. So this is rock bottom. This really is. We're going to go into the race. I'm going to go aggressive and see what I can get out of this race. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal. And it's make or break here at Albert Park, home of the Australian Grand Prix since 1996. And home to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get to another year. Underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. 
It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Jack Aitken lines up on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Albon, Daniel Ricciardo, and Verstappen, Ocon, Norris, Leclerc, and Lance Stroll, Sainz, Fiat, Antoine Hubert, and Magnussen, Giovinazzi, De Vries, Nicholas Latifi and Lewis Hamilton, Schumacher, Matsushita, Day and George Russell ends our grid lineup. OK, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. Bruh. Jack Aiken. First race weekend in F1. And he's on pole. In the best car. As if that wasn't demoralizing enough for Valtteri getting... Dominated by Lewis. Now he's getting beaten by a rookie. Scenes. Anyway, here we are for the grid of the Australian Grand Prix. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it all shapes up for not only ourselves, but for those further up the grid. I think it's going to be a more competitive season. Uh, that being more teams and drivers being able to win. Uh, before it was just us and maybe Mercedes sometimes. But now it's going to be Mercedes and maybe the likes of Red Bull. Racing points. Look pretty competitive this season. Alpha Tauri, uh, Pierre Gasly doing really well. It's crazy. Um, so I'm really keen to see how it all goes. Renault as well, always uh, overperforming what their actual car is like on the index. But for us, not going to be a good season. We'll see how it goes though. Five red lights and we are underway for the rebuild of Marduk Motorsport. It all starts here, heading into turn one. Let's see if we can gain a couple of places. There was someone who went absolutely steaming up the inside of everyone. That was Nobuharu Matsushita. And uh, yeah, he went from like last to P16. Absolutely ridiculous scenes. We got the inside of our teammate there, Lewis Hamilton, down into turn three, side by side with, uh, who is that? Giovinazzi and Latifi. We get caught up on the back of Giovinazzi, that allows Matsushita to slide on through. And now, for us, it is back down into P18. Here comes Lewis Hamilton around the outside. We cannot underestimate our teammate, that is for certain. And look at him go up the inside. He gets the spot back. And uh, I tell you what, this fighting in the, the back marker range of this grid is uh, it's awfully fierce. Here comes George Russell, who had a grid penalty for the start of this race. Don't know what that was for, but uh, he's challenging us in the Ferrari, which is a much, much superior car to us. We're just doing everything we can to hold on to whatever track position we can get. That's essentially going to be the, the formula for this early phase of the championship, and George just barges us right off the circuit. Marduk Motorsport, kick me out in uh, Season 2. Have a bit of that. Now that you're back, Marcus, he's uh, getting his... Revenge, it seems. So uh, here we go. We're slowing it down for this uh, third to last corner. And uh, upon reviewing this, I actually think there wasn't much that George Russell could do there. I think I just turned in too much. Uh, kind of had to turn in quite sharply, quite aggressively, because I don't have much downforce. It's a bit hard for me to run side by side with cars now. But um, yeah, I guess I reap what I sow there. Now we're down into second last in this race once again. So, uh, we're on the medium compound of tyre, I don't know if I mentioned that, but we're going for a long strategy, we're going to go on to the hards. We don't have our tyre wear upgrades, oh those tyre wear upgrades that we had last season, which were really the, the secret weapon to Marduk Motorsport. We're able to win so many races because we're able to have flexibility with strategy, we were so consistent in the race, so fast in the race. Here's George Russell, flying through the field, he's now up in a P18, he's got past not only Nick DeVries, but Lewis Hamilton as well. So, and now Matsushita, bloody hell. George Russell is on a charge in this Australian Grand Prix. Not easy to overtake around here. And uh, he is proving me wrong, it seems. Still, we run in last place. This is going to be a slow burner, this one, as we're looking to, well, play the long game and hope the tire wear can play into our favor. But that's only going to work up against the top 10 runners. And we don't have the pace of the top 10 runners. Lance Stroll is out of the session. And that is a big scalp for Racing Point because they're the third best car in the field now. They actually did the best over the winter. Um, they lost not much ground. A lot of people lost ground over the winter because of the regulation changes. The Racing Point lost not much. 
which may, meant in the overall scheme of things, they gained in the winter. But anyway, uh, in goes pretty much everyone for maybe their one and only stop in this race. Hamilton um, had first dibs. I'm following him in as well, going onto the hard compound attire to go to the end of the Grand Prix, maybe. But given how many people made a stop, I think I might actually do something different. I might come in again and go on to medium compound tyres. We don't exactly have the pace to uh, climb ourselves into the points, do we? So what I'm thinking is I'm going to do something different to everyone else. I'm going to go on to the medium compound tyre and either A, see if I can go to the end from there or B, uh, come in again late game and see if I can overtake a whole bunch of cars, maybe, who are on old hard compound tyres. Either way, I, I see this as uh, a way to distinguish ourselves from the rest of the field. We don't, we don't have the pace. That's the thing. We don't have the pace to overtake 10 cars to get in the points on pace. So we have to do things a bit different. And uh, I hope you guys will understand my uh, you know, strategy towards this. But uh, out the front of the field, we've got Jack Aiken still leading. Daniel Ricciardo, P2. Pierre Gasly is in third place. So an absolute mad podium uh, positions we've got uh, in this race so far. Valtteri Bottas has not had a good start to this one. But we're underway once again for the race, the Australian Grand Prix. I'm guessing Bottas had to double sack in the Mercedes garage, possibly. So he'll be on the back foot for the rest of this race. Running green sectors as we run through the middle sector of the lap and uh, we're starting to make some inroads on those ahead but um, considering the delta was like a second or so not exactly charging away through the field like I would like to it's gonna be a, a tough afternoon no matter which way we uh, slice the cake this weekend um, it's just not a, a track that lends itself well to overtaking and could you imagine how difficult it would have been if we stayed on the hard compound tyres for the rest of this race? We might have just been stuck in a train for the rest of the Grand Prix. But uh, meanwhile, we've got Mick Schumacher making a pit stop on the last lap. Uh, there were some people who actually didn't stop on the safety car, but not many. They were mainly the medium compound runners who uh, were sticking to their strategy. So um, yeah, each to their own. But now we're looking likely to get a move done here. First move of the race for us. 15 laps in, halfway stage. And we finally made a move. Well done. Can we get some likes in chat, please? That's not a thing. Can we get a like for that, please? <laughs> I've got to celebrate the small victories while I can in this uh, second coming of the Road to Glory series that this is uh, for my team. But uh, yeah, P19, uh, we're going to see if we can set our sights on Carlos Sainz. Uh, who is chasing after my teammate Lewis Hamilton. Let's see if we can uh, work together and come up with something that's going to, I don't know, get us both in front of signs and then some. So, um, yeah, I'm doing my best. Uh, but with the, the lack of tire wear upgrades, it's it's pretty crazy how, how much the tires degradate. It's, it's ridiculous. Nicholas Latifi is into the pit lane, by the way. Um, so that puts us up in a P17. But I think as things stand, we're going we're gonna to have to stop again. Uh, the tyre wear is, is pretty crazy and already I feel like the hard compound tyre is better than the medium. Um, I feel like some of these tyre wear upgrades are really underrated when it comes to uh, just getting the most out of a, of a weekend. They, they're quite crucial. Uh, to be honest, the weight reduction upgrades are normally the OP upgrades, but I'm starting to think that, you know, tyre wear upgrades is right up there, maybe equal to weight reduction. But uh, you can see Carlos Sainz having a go at Lewis Hamilton. Makes him go slightly compromised into the fast turns 10 and 11 complex. And now he's got the DRS barging his way through on my teammate. Someone has lost a bit of front wing. I think it might be Hamilton. As you can see, he's a little bit slow on exit. Sainz is through for P15 in this race. And now we're all over the back of our teammate. Are we going to go for a dive bomb into the second last corner? No is the answer because we're going to get DRS in just a corner's time. Look at Hamilton. He's all over the place. He's got no downforce on that front wing. And that's at the best of times. Let alone with damage. Here comes Nick DeVries up the inside of me. Down into turn one. Getting overtaken by a Haas. This is not the experience that I signed up for. Four seasons in. This is not fun. It is fun, actually. I don't know what I'm playing at. 
but uh, yeah, we move. We're going to see if we can get on the back of Hamilton again. Um, he was really slow through the last corner on the last lap, as you guys saw, but um, since recovering from that amount of pressure, he's now actually back on the pace again with damage, which is uh, quite damaging for my ego at the moment. As we go around the outside, Nick DeVries just in an effort to defend from him. I think I'm actually going to come into the pit lane. This is getting silly now. Um, we're losing time to Hamilton, who's got damage. Uh, tires are only wearing out now. We're going to box the softs, and we're going to go to the end of the Grand Prix. We're going to gun for a fastest start, maybe. Hope for a safety car, literally right now. Tire wear is a 53% on the left rear, and we've only been on these tires for around 10 or so laps, I think. Can't quite remember. So um, there was no way that those mediums were going to make it to the end anyway. So there we go. Tire wear upgrades has to be a priority going forward when we can unlock them in the chassis tree of R&D upgrades. What are we going to get there through? Uh, weight reduction upgrades. That is going to be uh, quite fruitful for us when we can get those in. So, um, yeah, that's going to be the target for now. The chassis is actually our worst part of our car right now. So it's imperative that we work on that. But we're moving our way through the field. We've now got past Mick Schumacher around the outside on soft compound tyres. For about... Well, the delta between the two of us should be about two seconds, given that I'm on the soft and he's on a hard. So um, that was pretty easy work for us. Next up is uh, Matsushita, who was, uh, well, absolutely crazy on that first lap down into turn one. Let's see if uh, we can pull off something similar on him. Hopefully we won't, don't need to resort to such measures, but we'll have to wait and see. I think this is going to be our fastest lap of the race. Um, so I'm just going to show you guys this on board, just to show you guys what the... Behavior of the car is, is like a little bit. You can see it ran wide a little bit there at turn nine. Um, but otherwise, the car feels pretty good, like I said, at the start of the weekend. Um, just lacking a bit of downforce. Um, it is slightly unstable at times. But again, that's down to the setup. Um, that the car is, I guess, heavy. And it's not quite nimble enough. But it doesn't feel horrible. The characteristics of this car are pretty good. Otherwise nice rocket ship that we've got strapped to the back of this thing. Thank you Mercedes for that. But anyway, through the third sector now uh, we're going to see if we can set a purple lap and take away a singular point from one of the top teams in Formula 1. We've run out of ERS and unfortunately even with the best tyres, the youngest tyres out of anyone in the field we're still not good enough to get a fastest lap. Uh, apparently the fastest lap was uh, at 1 minute 20.5 as we slide up the inside of oh, Matsushita, who made a massive mistake heading into that right-hander. I just took my normal line. He ran wide, completely left the door open, and then there was a bit of contact on exit. Uh, but thankfully, no damage for either of us, I think. We're just going to check the front wing, and it's absolutely fine. So um, that was a lucky escape for both of us. But here's an update on things up the front. Jack Aiken still leads this race, and it looks like he's going to win. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo, P2. Here's Pierre Gasly in third, who is looking likely to get a podium for the Alpha Tauri. So, real life uh, imitating the game, or the game imitating real life, whichever way you want to look at it. That is uh, amazing to see. To see that Pierre Gasly is on form in this season. But, uh, yeah, for us, it's going to be no points. Uh, no points for one of the Mercedes. Who is that? That is Valtteri Bottas, who comes to a stop at the end of this Australian Grand Prix. He was running in about P5 or something, and now he's gonna get a big fat zero. Massive free kick in the championship to Jack Aiken, who just goes and sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix as well, to rub it in to Valtteri Bottas. And now, he's only gone and won. And Jack Aiken wins! My God, boy, I told you it would come. Bloody hell, that is confidence. I told you it would come. Well, yeah, there is a level of expectation to win in a Mercedes, but not in your very first race in the sport. Take a bow, Jack Aiken. That is incredible. For us, not so incredible. It's, uh, I don't even see, 18th place in the end. Points, I think we're impossible today. Probably made the wrong strategy call, uh, but in the end, it was uh, a race that was doomed to fail. Another superb Australian Grand Prix comes to an end, and it's a thoroughly deserved victory. 
tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. This is crazy. Only a matter of, I don't know, weeks. Jack Aiken in game, didn't have a seat in Formula One. Now he's got the best seat and he's leading the championship with his teammates sitting on zero points. Pierre Gasly gets a podium for Alpha Tauri and Alexander Albon uh, gets on the podium too for Red Bull. So Daniel Ricciardo felt like a stone towards the end, which is a shame for him. But um, for Alpha Tauri, that is amazing. Danny Kvyat gets P7 as well. That'll do them pretty well on the constructors, but Jack Aiken. He's only rated like 70-something, mid-70s, mid I would say, and he's beaten a 80, high 80s Valtteri Bottas. That is incredible. Bottas DNF, yes, but Jack Aiken had this whole field on strings. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So um, that's the state of play for the championship. Um, it's kind of weird as well to see Lewis Hamilton in a, in a slow car. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Obviously wasn't able to make much of an impact today. Um, looking forward though to Bahrain. Bit of a power track. Um, not so much of a, a reliance on downforce there. So I think as a package, as a team, I think we might be competitive. We may have an outside chance of getting points. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, that's a, a tasty little championship we've got going at the moment. And now here, I'm getting thumbnails and um, I'm showing you this because I make a massive boo-boo. Yep, that just happened. Okay, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. Kids, would you step outside for a second? <laughs> Dear Lord, that's the loudest profanity I've ever heard. I'm so, I'm so angry. I am honestly raging because I I pressed restart session after the whole race had been completed, and um, I tried to uh, replicate. I, d I tried to retire to see if the same thing would happen. But Valtteri Bottas ends up finishing the race in the end. His car didn't DNF, which is against the script. Normally when an AI retires, it has to... It retires at the same point every time. Um, so um, that's that's a bit odd. So I had to take measures into my own hands and... Uh, uh, take Valtteri Bottas out of this race. The fun way. And uh, there we go. In the end, I think it, it doesn't matter because I wasn't going to score points in the race anyway. But um, we have absolutely sent Valtteri Bottas into the Shadow Realm. I was only meant to take him out for this race. But I, I feel like I may well have just taken him out for the rest of the season. That is um, that's a nasty shunt That's what we have given him. But in the end, the result is somewhat the same. Jack Aiken wins. Um, Albon is on the podium. No sign of Pierre Gasly. Um, we'll have to get an update on that in a second. But here's the replay of the uh, the big Shantarouski. There's no. I'm not going to do the whole race again. That's just that's just not going to happen. So um, there we go. Bottas instead ends with uh, a massive shunt instead of a. Oh. I don't think those spikes in the uh, in the tire bundles are overly safe. I don't know what kind of organization FIA are running here, but that is um, slightly dangerous to have uh, sharp objects in a what's well, meant to be a, a <laughs> this is death race kind of thing. Anyway, um, Bottas got beached in the bundles and um, word has it that he's still stuck in there. So he'll be um, just chilling in there for a few weeks while we're off to the next race of the season. But uh, yeah, I, I, t I don't know what to say. That was um, really silly of me. I tried to go back into um, replays 
to get more thumbnails, uh, but I ended up screwing the whole session. So that's that. Uh, in the end, I think Pierre Gasly ended up in P4. Max Verstappen, who was in 11th place, um, got on the podium. And Danny Kvyat didn't get points either. So it's just Kvyat and Verstappen, the two major outliers there. Pretty much everyone inside the top 10 uh, was relatively the same. Um, it's, it's near on impossible to recreate the exact same finishing order. Um, it's a bit, yeah, it's a shame, but, um, I did my best. So hopefully you guys can accept that apology on that front. Um, but going forward, that is very encouraging to see, um, Alpha Tauri, Pierre Gasly, whether it be in a fully race run event or a simulated race, they still end up at the front. Same too with Jack Aiken as well. You know, sometimes the game can be a bit silly when you simulate things and can send you down to last when you're in the best car and stuff like that. Thankfully for those guys, that didn't work out. And impressive, so impressive for Jack Aiken to be winning, to be dominating, well, not in a way dominating, but um, being in control of the whole weekend in his first race of his overall career um, with uh, lowered stats. Um, that's, that's quite ominous for Valtteri Bottas. Um, I feel like... And I think Harris talked about this too. Um, momentum is a big thing for a lot of the uh, the AI. And uh, to see all the momentum go Jack Aiken's way at the start, look out. But uh, anyway, that's it for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge of um, revitalizing this team and bringing it back to the front where it should be. And um, seeing who can pick up the pieces and, and can win a championship when it's wide open. This is absolutely anyone's championship. Aiken, Bottas, Gasly, Verstappen, Albon, Ricardo. The list goes on. Then you've got the Racing Point boys, which uh, have theoretically a really good package. Lance Stroll retired today, um, so we weren't able to see the full potential of Racing Point. So um, the development race is on, and I can't wait to see how this season in particular pans out. Join me for the next episode. For Bahrain. What happened? Let me know you're okay.